Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time. If you are new, we are back to watch another episode of Rings of Power. This is season two, episode four. It is called Eldest. Now, there are two things that that title could maybe apply to, one of which is the Ents uh, that we got teased last episode, the, the female Ents that we saw in the trailer. They are probably pretty old. Um, otherwise, it could be maybe like Tom Bombadil, because uh, I feel like he's pretty old. He might be one of the el one of the eldest people in this uh, uh, Lord of the Rings universe. Because um, there's like the theory that he's basically like God, but who knows? Either way, I'm excited to see uh, where the story takes us. So before we jump into it, if you end up enjoying this reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me. If you're new here, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. And then if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon or joining YouTube memberships. You just sync up your own copy of the show and you can watch along with me. But other than that, let's jump into Season 2, Episode 4 of Rings of Power. We shall need an archer, two swordsmen. I trust you can recommend a set. Trust? Yeah. Me. She's good at you her said job. That's wise, Commander. Come on, Galadriel. The Vikings <laughs> urging I agree to appoint you as first lieutenant. But if you deem that duty beneath you, I will choose another. Yes. Yes, what? You can trust her. Yes, I can recommend an archer and two swordsmen. <laughs> He's like, if you're going to be petty, I'll be petty. <laughs> I like that they acknowledged that uh, they haven't heard word from Celebrimbor. That's always good. This is some classic Lord of the Rings right here. As you just see them trekking across the landscape. Well, some classic Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings technically, but still. You guys are going to need to rebuild this bridge, dang. No earthly force could do this. This is the work of Sauron. To circumvent it, we shall either have to turn due north, adding two weeks to our journey. Or? Or we can jump. We go south. Which will get us to Eredion much farther. Spooky. There is evil in those hills. Ancient and filled with malice. This collapse makes it more critical than ever to reach Calibrimbor at speed. We won't reach anywhere at speed if we walk into a trap. Do you guys have a rope? Can you go to the bottom and then climb back up the other side? We go south. Commander, I must protest. Your opinion on the matter has been heard. Elrond. Opinion heard, Lieutenant. We go south, Menno. <laughs> she does not love not being in charge. This company will not take counsel from that trinket. Nor will you. If you cannot abide by those terms, you will leave now and return to Lindon. I should like to. Then why do you not? She doesn't want you to because get killed. Because I don't wish to see any of this company slain. Including you. She's here to save your life. That's it. Saruman, they got taken by a tornado. I don't know how they're possibly still alive. Unless we're gonna say they landed in some water or an ant caught them. Unless Tom Bombadil saved them. Um. <coughs> Pardon me, I don't suppose you've seen a pair of halflings come this way? Tomo. See, so you found the goat. Yeah, we weren't looking for him. There are some stars above your hill. 
stars above most hills. True. I had hoped that... My apologies. Just a and moment. Some stars, man. <laughs> He's going to lead you exactly where you need to go. With his mystical wind. And isn't this a nice stick if you break it off? Of course. This could be a nice staff. Just, just rip it off the tree. Are you strong enough? Is this an end? It is. Drop an F bomb, Saruman? Um, I guess that's the end of his storyline. How are you possibly alive? Poppy! Oh. Get up! What if Poppy was dead? <laughs> they reunite them just to kill her. Okay, so... Oh. Psych. God damn! <laughs> okay. Just yeet ourselves off a cliff. Their bodies are remarkably them. resilient. Where did you lot come from? Hello. Oh, my head. Uh... Live here? Harfords live here. What's an Harford? <laughs> well, you are. Okay, Who these two are going to fall in love. Got it. I'm nobody. That's what everybody calls me. Well, if everybody calls you nobody, doesn't anybody call you somebody? Well, my mum calls me Mary Mac. It's a beautiful name, Mary Mac. Okay, yeah, they're in love already. <laughs> She's like, what the F is happening? You're about to meet the Gooned, or Dwell Leader. The Gooned? So they found some sand Harfoots. Harfoots living in holes. Classic. It's classic Harfoot. It doesn't seem natural. That's because we're not Harfoots. We're stores. What were you thinking bringing them here? Nobody's that stupid. Wait, <laughs> if we put your brains in a vulture, it'll fly backwards. Be nicer to him. <laughs> Oh, hot damn. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't feed you leg, limb, and joint to those Gaudrum hunting you out there. Gaudrum? I have walked across rivers and mountains and deserts to help my friend find his destiny. One the fate of the world may well depend on, yours included. I said one good reason. <laughs> this friend of yours. Who is he, anyways? He's a wizard. He's a magic He's a wizard. wizard. Well, the only wizard under these skies is the dark wizard. Well, it's not that guy. Let him out again. Oh, is this me. an ant or just a tree that he knows? <laughs> He's Tom. Been a while since I've been called much of anything, but back in the Withy Window, folk used to call me Bombadil. <laughs> Tom Bombadil. Love it. Man just loves to sing. He's got a lady here. Is uh, is somebody out there with you? I, I thought I heard a woman singing. Woman? What woman? 
The one that was just He's singing, brother. With you. you can just also sing like a girl. You're here. That is, I think you are. Are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Man's got a secret wife he doesn't want to tell us about. What are you? Don't you know my name yet? He's the first one. You are young. And I am old. Eldest. That's what I am. What do you mean eldest? Who's the first one here? Tom was there before the river and the trees. He knew the dark under the stars when it was fearless. I thought he... Uh, he might be able to uh, lend me a branch. Oh, well, you should have tried asking him. Yeah, instead of just ripping it off. <laughs> Easy, Yarwai. Easy. Tom, you're crazy, bruh. It's magic. Can you teach it to me? You wield power over trees, over wind and fire. You wield it as if it belongs to you. It does. I was never meant to find a staff under these stars. I was meant to find you, wasn't I? I think this is either Gandalf or Saruman. You're not the first Eastar who's eaten honey by my fire. Years ago, there was another dark wizard. What became of him? Well, he became evil. <laughs> Hence the name Dark Wizard. If these two flames combine into one, there will be no end to burning till all Middle Earth is ashes. So is the Dark Wizard... Is the Dark Wizard Saruman? Can you... Or is he it? Saruman? Old Tom's a wanderer, not a warrior. Because Saruman Red was the good ones. are left to the hands they were placed in. You mean my hands? Is it my task to stop the fire? Is it my task to face Sauron? Maybe. Your task is to face them both. Let's get to work, buddy. Yeah, you guys are gonna wanna take your weapons out. The barding is from Lindon. Now we know what happened the to the messengers. The dispatch to warn Calabrimbor. This dispatch. We must go from this place. Oh. Oh. See ya. Don't let go. Damn. So he's dead. Yo. Prepare yourselves. What are they? Barrow whites. That's spooky. How do we kill them? I have a feeling they'll just reform, yeah. Attacking them will do nothing. We need to use magic somehow. They're impervious to our weapons. 
Hold fast. Come with me. Where are you going? Help me open it. What? Not in! What are, what are we doing? Duck. Take it. Attacking them doesn't do much when they just reform themselves. According to law, only the blades with which they were buried will return such creatures to rest. But I think it's safe to say that something has awoken them. No. Someone. Someone awakening evil across all Middle Earth. Do you? Do not torture yourself, Numenoria. Theo has survived far worse. Has he, though? He will weather this. <laughs> I mean, technically, yeah, he has, but that doesn't mean he's alive. You do better to look north. How do you know? know? I've spent weeks searching these lands, looking for loved ones. That part of the forest is old. Promise you there are wild men there, and worse. Okay. Suspicious. I mean, we know she at least was once one of them. <laughs> you missed a spot. You can get it with your tongue. <laughs> Just kidding. But probably. Thanks. You guys should kiss. Fancy you never want for water on your island. No, in Numenor we have water in most of our homes. I'd like to see that. I wager you're betrothed with two. Nah. Screw that guy. He's dead. Or it's you. You say you spend time among the wild men, Estrid. How much? Uh, I wasn't exactly among them. I was hiding. Did they ever do you harm? I don't dare what you... I ask because I noticed a wound on your neck. Looks to be recent. We all do foolish things sometimes. Especially in moments of hopelessness. What is this? Self burn. The wild men do it to hide the mark of Ada. We would have caught her at the gate had she not come in with you. Damn. She did stab him, so. <laughs> Wait, you don't even have a betrothed. Would you rather I died in Mordor? I don't know. Let me think. She seemed hurt by that. What is it? These specific flower petals. Theo was not taken by men at all. Theo, are you in a tree gibbet? Gibbet? A gibbet made of trees. It is a tree gibbet. Might be easier to balance if I had use of my hands. And easier to nah. escape. No one could escape in this. It's all right. Hmm. Quicksand. Give me your hand. She's 
like, well, surely you're gonna get out. Oh, she's gonna help. that there are nameless things in the deep places of this world god dang this one we shall call supper <laughs> <laughs> hot damn around dear. sadak burrows was your leader's name yeah is that your ex-boyfriend story goes in ancient days there was a store. They say he dreamed one night of a place with endless streams of cold water and rolling hills so soft a family could dig an hole and live in it in less than a month. He called it the Suzat. Or the Shire. But that was the last any of us ever heard of Rory Mass Burroughs. Grandpa Rorimas, we know him. <laughs> no, we don't, but what if we did? Have you come back here to lead us all to the Suzat? Nah. I think... Um, Poppy might, but we have a different plan. Rorimas never found the Suzat. We don't have a home. My father foresaw that... One day, Celebrimbor's life would be in my hands. I will choose the path I must to give me the best hope of protecting it. Protecting that which is most fragile, most dear, is a task entrusted to all else. Yeah. And I promise you there will be more painful Sacrifices. Galatrio. The fall of Numenor. I didn't know that was not Numenor. Hell. That was, um... You I think that was Celebrimbor's city. All other considerations. Even my life. I will make no promise whose asking is born of that ring. But I swear to you. Defeating Sauron will come first. Good. Even before you. Good, good, good. Is that the key to the manacles? I believe you meant for you to decide whether or not to use it. Well, you're cute, so... Kills him immediately. <laughs> Kiss. No. Kiss. You still do, you see. Yes. Forgiveness doesn't come to folk like me. Sooner or later they'll cast me out, you know they will. He won't though. I won't let the Trees with the with the white flowers. Testrens, drop the sword. Oh, damn! She just died. Greenwood. Hast thou ever touched axe to wooded life? 
technically. Great pain I have, but... He also apologized to the tree first. He said sorry. He, he said a, a, a prayer to it. There was a, an army of them maiming and murdering as they marched. We saw what they did. They're bad. We don't like them. Why are you so angry? An army. How long ago was this? Winter Bloom nourished many of those trees from seed and sprout. Do not ask her to speak more of it. They are no different from them. They're a, a wee bit different. Speak to the tree. They're going now. I miss not. I got up. Forgiveness takes an age. Yeah. Rain. Washing clear the long memory of soil. Now, take us to Theo. We have tended this forest since before the mountains rose up and divided it. Damn. When the only sound here was the light on the moss. Theo. And the breathing. Theo. We're only freeing Theo. <laughs> the others can stay. Yes. We know peace. Okay, now kiss. Smooch, Estrid. smooch. Estrid. Oh, that's her betrothed, isn't it? I thought you... So did I. <laughs> I can't believe you're here. You sealed or killed this guy. <laughs> Get around here. Kill him. <laughs> we don't need this guy around. Wow, the two trees are holding hands. Damn, they're not even shooting at us, they're trying to kill this horse. Damn, fat rip to that guy, though. I think he's done. Oh, damn. Magic ring. Venna. Shut up, dude. Don't talk too loud. Get to Lindon. I will occupy them as long as I am able. Take it. Take it, Eldot. Alright, Galadriel. Let's see what you can do, girl. What a goat. There are so many of them though. Damn, you just grabbed that barehanded? She 
sacrificed herself to save us all. <laughs> Sacrifice? Nah. She's just a one-woman army. No, you are mistaken, Kim Nier. Is Agor Uan at Raith Anwen? She did to escape you. Man. Agerian Edraith and Egor. And to save the ring, yeah. Hurry! These are elven lands. Go back to the shadow! Oh, hey, dude. Awkward. Now oh. let the song begin. Let us sing together. What is this song? Talking about Tom Bombadil. Bright blue his jacket is, and his boots are yellow. This is a fun song. Okay, this was such a fun episode. Like, I feel like people who love Lord of the Rings, I feel like if you watch this episode, you can't help but feel just like a tiny bit giddy about certain things. I mean, obviously the two, I feel like the two biggest things that you would probably be like super excited about are seeing a female ant on screen um, with, you know, Isildur and Arondir's story, but then also seeing Tom Bombadil for the first time in live action, that has to be like so crazy for a long time Lord of the Rings fan. Um, and like even, I don't know a ton about Tom Bombadil, but even for me, like seeing him on screen was kind of like, oh my God, like this is crazy. Like this is a big thing. Um, and he was just so weird. <laughs> He's just so goofy and like, unpredictable but also like there is this sense of like time about him um and it's just very very interesting so obviously last episode we have uh nori and poppy taken away by this tornado stranger is looking for him the stranger who potentially could be saruman could be gandalf we don't know yet um he's looking for them and he finds tom bombadil and he's just so confused because there's just this singing dude um, in the middle of a desert with, you know, trees and, and fruits and bees around him. Like he has this sense of like, like the, like the, f the flora and the fauna are like either like coalescing around him or like coming from him, you know, in the, in the, inside the episode, they kind of talked about how he's like seemingly kind of like the essence of the nature you know, like he has this like innate connection to all of it, whether or not he's just been around a long time or whether or not he is like the OG, like if he is what a, a Luvatar or whatever they call God in this universe, that would be very interesting if he was. I mean, he says that he is the eldest and he says that he was here before there were stars, like when it, when it was just darkness and it was when the the darkness was fearless uh, and it, and you know one day he looked up and there were all these eyes looking down at him <laughs> and he's just it's very curious you know it's very curious like he either could be god or he could be like hey he's the first one like the very first person or something that god created in this world and he was down here just chilling <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, and then the rest happened, you know, in, in, I guess, like, in biblical times, like, like, real world, real world, like, Bible story stuff, earth was created before men, 
but maybe in um, in this, a man was created first and then the earth formed around. I, I don't know. But he's just so goofy and whimsical. <laughs> and he's, you know, there's a moment where he's straight up like, He's, I mean, he's singing throughout, but then he, like, is like, hey, honeycomb or whatever. Like, I forgot the girl's name that he called out. And then this woman starts singing with him. But then when the stranger's like, is there a, a woman here? He's like, there's no woman here. <laughs> he's like, you're here. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? He's just so weird and, like, just says things. Um, but he also has this, like, dearth of knowledge about him, right? Like, he, he knows who... Like, he probably knows who the stranger is, like, who he actually is. Um, and the stranger's like, will you teach me how to how to do this? And he's like, eh, you're not worthy of it yet. Like, you want to learn how to use a staff? Like, I don't think you're worthy of using a staff yet. Um, you got to figure out, like, what your purpose is, like, what your task that has been given to is. Like, he talks about Sauron, he's like, you know, I'll leave that task to the, to the, those who have who have had it placed in their hands. Um, and he essentially lets the stranger know, like, your task is to face the fire and to face Sauron, and we'll see what happens. And that is curious, because that could lead credence to the idea of him being Gandalf. Because that's, like, a huge part of Gandalf's story, is, like, he is integral in the fight against Sauron. Um, in the third age, right? And he, he talks about, you know, I mean, that would be interesting. He also could be Saruman, which would be like a heartbreaking twist that like he, he becomes so close to these, these little half foots and then eventually turns evil. Like that would be, that would be a dark twist is like this guy who seems so hopeful and so kind eventually wanders down a dark path and, and joins Sauron. That would that would be tough. That would be real tough. But um, Tom Bombadil also said that the dark wizard, um, who is like hunting them, that he was the first Eastar to come and meet with Tom Bombadil or whatever. Like he was the first one to come down. And from what I have heard in, in actual Tolkien lore, Saruman was the first one to come down. Or one of the blue wizards. I don't 100% know. Um, so that could maybe lead some credence to the Dark Wizard being Saruman. But then that's a little confusing because from what we know, Saruman wasn't always evil, right? Like he, he was given the role of, of the White Wizard, which is like the top dog of the wizards, who is like the best one, the goodest one, the most powerful one, right? And then he fell from that spot to join Sauron. And so if he started bad and then became good and then fell again, that would be interesting, but I don't know. There's lots of stuff to wonder about. So lots of lots of interesting things are happening with that storyline now, especially with the introduction of Tom Bombadil, because it could go anywhere. Uh, what other storylines are happening? We didn't visit uh, Sauron himself or Celebrimbor or um, the dwarves or any of that this time, we spent a lot of time with the elves. So, Arondir and then, um, Galadriel and Elrond's company. So, Arondir and, uh, Isildur and, um, Estrid, I think that was her name. They're all trying to find Theo. We learn that Estrid, you know, was formerly part of the Wild Men. She is potentially telling the truth about searching for her spouse, though, or her... Uh, not her spouse, but her, um, the, her promised, or, what, like, the, her, it, what's the word? Why can't I think of it? Betrothed. That's the word. <laughs> um, so, her fiancé, kind of, I don't know. They're searching for that, and they are just, like, making their way, and they fall into this mud trap, and there's, like, this giant, like, slug snake thing in there that ate them. <laughs> they have to cut their way out. Uh, but she saved their lives. So that's good. Like, we can, I think we can trust her. Yeah, I think we can trust her. She was going to be like, hey, I'm taking this sword and I'm running because they're never going to trust me. They're always going to, you know, cast me out. And Isildur's like, I will not let them. I will not let them cast you out because I'm in love with you. And they almost kissed and it was, it was almost nice. And then her freaking betrothed showed back up. 
and it's like, bruh, <laughs> like, screw you, we don't want you here, like, let's kill this guy, uh, but it is what it is, no, the, the big moments of that storyline in specific, I think really revolved around, um, the Ents, right, like, they're, the Ents were gonna kill them, they were like, hey, we don't appreciate all these trees being cut down, like, what's the deal with you guys? And Arondir had to be like, hey, I ask your forgiveness, I promise that, like, no one will touch these trees as best that I can choose, <laughs> you know, like, as, as much influence as I have, I will do my best to make sure no one's cutting down these trees, um, for an age. And maybe that's why the female Ents don't really show up anymore, is because they are just like, you know, we're waiting we're waiting for, you know, their, she said forgiveness takes an age. Maybe the female ants, I mean, there was a male ant there too, but maybe the female ants are like, hey, we're not moving until we actually forgive them. And maybe they hadn't quite forgiven them yet by, by the time the OG trilogy starts. They're still waiting, you know, they're still holding that grudge a little bit. Um, <laughs> but who knows? Um, it was cool when they were leaving, they were holding hands. Oh, it was nice. Um, that was really cool to see them, though. And we get Theo back. Uh, we get Theo back, and now him and Arondir, I think, are going to be going... They're going to try and find Adar and get revenge against him, because I think they both blame him for the loss of um, Theo's mom for Bronwyn. Um, so I'm curious to see if it's just going to be them two going forward. You know, what is Isildur going to do? Is he going to stay with um, Arondir and, and join their their crew? I mean, he, from the inside the episode thing, um, they talk about how he has this, like, longing for home. Like, he kind of wants to go home. Uh, and he's figuring out what home means to him. So maybe he eventually finds himself back on Numenor, uh, I don't know, but we did, I mean, w we know that eventually Numenor sinks, right? Like, so, I, that's probably gonna be a lot of season three, is the fall of Numenor, um, but yeah, currently the orcs are marching towards Eregion, which I think they're going to, uh, destroy the city, uh, because we've, we've seen it in, uh, in Galadriel's dreams right in in her in her ring vision we saw the at least partial destruction and i think that's what that was there was a statue that came down uh so i'm very curious what's going to happen with that but um <laughs> they they're trying to get there they're trying to find their way and elrond does not trust this ring at all he's like i'm not following directions from this ring like, I'm in charge, I'm making the decisions, I don't trust that ring, and I kind of don't trust you because you're so clearly just letting it influence your decisions. And Galadriel is like, hey, I know that this <laughs> ring is not corrupting me. Or she's at least very confident. She's like, I had these feelings before I had the ring, and I still have them, now it's just providing visual clarity, <laughs> right? Like, these, this is important. Um, quit being so petty. <laughs> and they wander through, um, some Barrow Whites, which is what took out the, um, took out the messenger from Lindun last time. And they lose it, at least one elf to the Barrow Whites. And, uh, the, that interaction was pretty interesting because they're like, clearly they can't kill them. I think it ended a little too quickly. Uh, in my opinion, I think it could have been a, a more extended scene, um, but it was still cool. I mean, they they killed the Barrow Whites with their own weapons, and then they moved on. And then yeah, they saw all the orcs marching, and Galadriel had a dope scene where she's like, "I'm gonna take on like ten of these guys at once, um, so that the ring can escape." You know, it's probably a good thing that she gave Elrond the ring uh, before she charged into this fight, because then. Otherwise, Adar would have it, so clutch thinking there. Um, but yeah, she gets taken captive, um, I believe, by Adar. Like, I, I'm, I assume he's taking her captive. He's not just going to be like, hey, you can go free. <laughs> so um, I'm very curious what's going to happen. What's going to happen with that? Because they're marching on Eregion, where Sauron and Celebrimbor are currently, and... Yeah, next episode they definitely 
uh, I think are going to go back to the dwarves because they showed some decent amount of stuff about them digging down and potentially encountering the Balrog, which is not great. Um, so we have that to worry about. Numenor, we're going to touch back on there next time. Um, but yeah, yeah, this was a solid episode. I really enjoyed it. I feel like this was almost like a dream come true for a lot of Tolkien fans of like seeing certain things on screen. Um, if only they uh, could remove themselves from hating it so much. <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably be pretty stoked about this. Um, you know, seeing seeing Tom Bombadil is super cool. Um, and I'm excited to see where the second half of the season takes us. We're halfway through already. But yeah, definitely let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. I'm very curious to see how you feel. Otherwise, if you enjoyed my reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. And then if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon or joining YouTube memberships. You just sync up your own copy of the show and you can watch along with me. But other than that, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next time.